Sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is Bruce, G4ABX, and welcome to another YouTube video. This one is about the most complicated I've ever set up or tried to set up. So I've got four cameras running. Um, I've got a new piece of kit. I've got the Blackmagic A10 Mini for video switching. Never used that before. I'm using OBS to do the recording. Never used that before. And I'm using two or three LED lights that I'm having great difficulty in preventing them shining in my glasses. But uh, we'll, do, we'll do our best. Hopefully you can put up with that and uh, the content will be worth the hassle. Yesterday I uploaded a YouTube video on buck converters, well, a specific buck converter. Um, I backed it up with uh, some details on my website, uh, g4abx.co.uk. But I thought I'd show you how I actually use that specific buck converter in my portable Raspberry Pi application. So I've got set up here, as well as me, <laughs> the Raspberry Pi 4 um, running off 12 volts with the buck converter. Um, I've also got um, Build-A-Pi running headless. Build-A-Pi is the fantastic range of applications that uh, Jason KM4ACK has sorted out all the scripts for. Absolutely brilliant. I, I would have to say that um, Jason is probably the reason I've got into Raspberry Pis. Two years ago I knew nothing about a Raspberry Pi. I thought a Raspberry Pi was something that uh, kids use to learn how to program. Um, yeah, they probably do, but this big kid here now is having to learn how to program as well. Um, I've also got an IC705 setup connected to the Raspberry Pi, so we'll be able to do a little bit of uh, tuning around the bands, um, just to kind of illustrate that there's no real hassle or noise or anything like that coming from the buck converter. Um, and if this all works, uh, that'll be amazing, but uh, <laughs> we'll start. Uh, with the overhead camera, and I'll try not to put my big head in the way, uh, the overhead camera that's looking at the Raspberry Pi. So, here we go. Right, so this is the Raspberry Pi setup. Um, this is the buck converter that I talked about yesterday. Um, good little device, and, and here it is. Here's another one installed inside my Raspberry Pi case. So this is the Raspberry Pi 4B. Um, I also have the toroid that I mentioned yesterday um, as a common mode choke uh, wrapped around the output cables before it feeds the Raspberry Pi and the 12 volts is being fed by this uh, tracer battery absolutely brilliant 12 volt battery 8 ampere hour 12 volt battery which I've had for about five years now and it's still as good as the day I bought it you have to treat uh, batteries uh, with respect and keep them charged correctly, not overcharged, not let them go flat, etc, etc. But a really excellent device. Other little bits and pieces inside my Raspberry Pi. It's got an aluminium case. Um, try and have as much screening. These plastic cases, I thought, are probably going to be nowhere near robust enough for portable operation. And they offer no screening either, RF screening. Um, there's a little module here, which is the real-time clock. Uh, you probably notice there's no GPS module plugged into this. I'm actually indoors at the moment, so uh, the GPS simply doesn't work. Uh, so without the um, real-time clock, I wouldn't be able to run um, FT8 for very long. Uh, I have actually got this one plugged into my network. This uh, Raspberry Pi is uh, directly plugged. Uh, here's the, uh, the cable to the uh, 705. And I've also got here uh, my small uh, touchscreen based uh, monitor that I use uh, when I'm here. Uh, and for setting up the Raspberry Pi, I find it more convenient than having to sort out the headless operation. Although headless is what we're heading to now. Um, and uh, I'll just switch across to the screen capture. So here we have uh, the Raspberry Pi running headless. Um, this is a Windows C, uh, sorry, a, a Windows 10 machine. And you can see the level of activity that there is uh, around here. Um, 
some interesting stations here, some countries I've not worked before. Um, so uh, there's one. Uh, we could try and work him or her. <laughs> Gone. Okay, let's, uh, let's get rid of that and, uh, and wait for something else interesting to come up. Um, for those of you that haven't seen uh, KM4ACK's Builder Pi, um, if I just click down here, um, this is the range of applications that is included in the scripts that Jason writes and uh, to help all us uh, radio hams out there um, operate with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, build a Pi, absolutely superb piece of software. And um, I certainly wouldn't be a Raspberry Pi user had it not been for Jason. Um, so uh, many thanks to that for him. Right, let's try this guy and see if we can work him. So we're running, uh, I'll just switch over to my rig camera. You can see that I'm just making, uh, trying to make the contact at the moment. We're running about 5 watts currently. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see if he comes back to us. Who knows? <coughs> Usually takes a, a couple of couple of calls. I uh, know he's calling again, so I didn't get him that time. But um, once we, we'll just try this a couple of times and if I get him great, if I don't, fine, then we'll, uh, we'll tune off and uh, I'll get done that that I wanted to get done by tuning around the band. But uh, it, it's always interesting, I think, if you see some uh, rare station or rarish station being contacted. Uh, he's drop down in QSB, that's the problem. No, it's calling CQ again. Okay, let's forget that. Uh, I won't carry on with that. Um, I really wanted to tune around the band now with the rig uh, and just to kind of demonstrate the level of signals that we have here and the fact that the Raspberry Pi's buck converter is not causing us any hassle. So let me just uh, turn up the volume a bit. Okay. That's an EA, Spain. Germany. Russia. I think you can probably see that um, stations are jumping out the noise. Um, there are no squeaks and burps. <laughs> That's the uh, FT8 frequency. Um, a few more digital signals. These are all um, coming in on the antenna. SSB. So I'll just tune up to the top of the band. So, not too bad actually for a, as all kinds of external crud comes in. Um, so, really not too bad for uh, 20 metres on a Thursday afternoon at nearly five o'clock. <laughs> so, um, I hope that at least gives you a, a little bit of uh, assurance that uh, the buck converter does what it says on the tin, converts the voltage, transforms the voltage, and doesn't cause you huge amounts of hassle. So that's it for this, uh, this video. Uh, it's kind of worked, which, uh, apart from the fact that I can see <laughs> in my monitor that uh, unless I hold my head very still, 
the uh, the lighting. Um, I'm going to have to work on lighting. A bit of soft box rather than hard LEDs. I think is probably the uh, the way to go with that. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, 73s to you, and I hope you have a great day. All the best. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.